like to call this meeting to order in beautiful Cleveland, Mississippi. Uh, glad to had a nice little drive over here today. It was wet, but it wasn't snow and ice, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm glad it's gone. I, I got cabin fever sitting in the house waiting on it to dry out, but we always start our program off with a prayer. Jason Thompson, would you? Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day that you have created, this day that you have allowed us to see. We thank you for the sunshine and the rain. We thank you for allowing us to gather together once again. Uh, we thank you, Father God, for the staff that we have here, our executive staff, Father God, our, our commissioners. And we pray that everything that is done on today, we do it for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jason. I'd like to first of all welcome everybody. Uh, we're glad to be here. Uh, got a few people I'd like to recognize. <coughs> Strangely enough, two of them are from Tallahatchie County where I was raised. And, uh, but Ron Selby's here with the Delta Wildlife right here. And, uh, and Ed Coleman, I know y'all, he's been living in Cleveland for 100 years, but he and I went from the first grade all the way through school in Charleston, so he's a great friend of mine. And uh, Tom Janis, who is on the what, on the Federation Board, excuse me, the Foundation Board, I, 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 I ever heard that. Glad you all are here. And we got several other people we're going to recognize later, but uh, thank you for being here. I need a motion for the adopt the minutes. So moved. Motion's been Stay made, is there a second? Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. What about today's agenda, Mr. Posey? As far as I know, there are no... Uh, Corrections or additions to today's agenda, Mr. Chairman. I'll no, make right. a motion to accept. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion's been made and second to we adopt the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. License sales. That's what keeps the boat floating. For you people here that don't understand this, about 90% of the money that this agency spends comes from license sales. Go ahead, Jason, excuse me. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, our numbers for the end of December, we have generated so far $14,337,000, and that is a $276,000 increase from the revenue last year. Um, of course, however, the license numbers are down in terms of privileges sold 4% compared to last year. Uh, from the $14 million that we've generated, $5.1 million is from resident license sales. Uh, we have seen an increase in WMA permits, 547 more sold, uh, archery and primitive weapon privilege of 5%, and boat guide numbers, we only sold one in December, um, so that brings our what total What is that total? To, How many total is that? So 72. 72 guides. Yeah. You would, I didn't think it would be that many. 65 cool. resident and 8 non-resident. 8 non-resident? 8 non-resident, yes, sir. All right, revenue from non-resident license sales uh, up $366,000. Small game, 7%, and the deer permits are up $754,000. Uh, but the number of those permits sold is down 1,200 from last year. Permit sales are up close to 3%, and lifetime licenses are up 1%. Uh, customers setting up for auto renewal, 19,481 this year compared to 15,715 last year. So you're saying about four or 5,000 more people are doing auto renewal? Which is good, yes. 4,000 more That's, this year. Like and, picking it up in the street there. Yes, sir. And license packages are up, um, well, we've sold 24,302 compared to 23,537 last year. That sounds like a real good report. Any commissioners got any questions for Jason? Uh, Jason, uh, anything about the turkey draw for a uh, uh, public land draw? Does that happen in January, February? For the non residents, it started on the 15th. Uh, so I pulled numbers this morning, and we've had uh, 1,041 to apply. <laughs> and when's the deadline for applying? 15th, February 15th. February 15th. Yes, sir. The turkey that, draw for the our WMAs is open and opened on the 15th as well. Mm -hmm. 
then I think it closes on the 15th of March too. That's for residents and non-residents. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, yeah. So uh, okay. So that'll be that, the, the, for the out-of-state resident. The out-of-state draw is up until the 15th and of February. Yes, sir. Of, of February, and that's that's for all public land. Yes. Okay. Good. Just just checking. And, and another question: Auto renewal does that uh, does that renew everything except? federal duck stamps? Everything except federal duck stamps since it's a seasonal stamp. But everything else, um, yeah. with the exception of trip licenses, but if it's a year license, it will auto-renew. And yeah, the federal duck stamp, they may work to be electronic starting this next year. Okay. So anyway, there's something we ought to think about, you know, because uh, it passed Congress last year. I don't know. I don't think it was implemented this year, but I think next year you, you, you'll be able to actually have an electronic stamp evidence on your phone or device yeah. that will be sufficient. I know we have it now, but it's for a limited time where you have to have the physical stamp, but I'll check <coughs> into it to see if they, yeah. they're going to be full year. This year you still have to have physical, but next year I think. Okay, I can check on that. Cool, thanks. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Mm -hmm. Where's our net? <laughs> we need to, oh. You gonna do it? No, I'm no. Gonna leave it. I'll make a quick introduction. I'll okay. yield my time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so as you know, we had to look for a new alligator program leader over the last year, uh, and we did that. And Andrew Arnett uh, came from Law Enforcement Bureau back to the Wildlife Bureau where he started, and we're glad to have him. I think he's gonna do a fantastic job. So I'm gonna yield my time to him today to bring you the Pelahatchie Bay alligator season. So. Let's talk about Pelahatchie Bay. Arnett, we're glad to see you. Good morning. Hey, oh. by the way, we got a text this morning from Larry saying to be nice to you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to give a quick update on Pelahatchie Bay for 2023. I'd uh, like to direct you all to that page in you alls book. Last year for the 2023 special season on Pelahatchie Bay, there was a a grand total of 1,669 applicants. Uh, of those applications, there were 718 that were eligible for the draw. Uh, there was a total of 24 permits that were drawn, and all 24 of those permits were purchased. Um, there were 21 alligators harvested during that special season with a total of 48 that could have been harvested. Um, earlier this month, we got approval to do another special season on Pelahatchie Bay for this year, 2024. It would be the second year of this special season. And uh, the purpose of that season is to target uh, breeding age adults to uh, help reduce complaints on Pelahatchie Bay and the residents that live around Pelahatchie Bay. Um, None of the rules are being proposed to change anything for Pelahatchie Bay or anything like that. Just uh, hoping to move forward with a, another special season this year to help those residents out and cut down population in that. Um, I'd like to direct you all to the back page. It should be the last page in y'all's uh, book. It's a one pager proposing to change a rule in Pelahatchie Bay's regs. Uh, it's in rule 5.4 on the alligator hunting season for Pelahatchie Bay. In under section L, it'd be that subsection C would like to strike through that calendar year of 2023. Uh, purpose, is that, purpose for that is to keep from having to come back to change that calendar year every year. So I, I'd like to propose to remove that calendar year from I make a motion. Motion. Like a motion. Second. The motion has been made. Is there a second? Yes, yes second. Motion has been made and second. We accept the staff recommendation. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, we got it. Sir. And what was the site, the largest alligator harvested? The largest one that come out of Pelahatchie Bay, I believe, was somewhere around 12 foot 3, if I'm not mistaken. That's a good as a male, I guess. Arnett, tell me why out of 1,669 applicants, we only, 718 were 
<clears throat> considered? What, what happened to the other? So that's, it. that's a two-part application. They have to apply with a, with a partner to okay. be eligible to be drawn for that special hunt. It's a two-part application. So if, if, if I were to apply and you were my partner and you didn't apply, that would make me not eligible okay. for that draw. Oh, that makes sense. Yes, sir. And for the people in the room that uh, don't know where Pele Atcha Bay is, that's on the Ross Barnett Reservoir. So everybody that in Baltimore County may not know where Pelahatchee Bay is. So where Pelahatchee Bay is located, if you look at the... It's a residential um, section. It is, and it, if you blow a map up and look at it from, you know, way up high and out, that's actually the last stop of alligator habitat coming down all the contributaries of the Pearl River before you get to the uh, causeway on the reservoir. So they like to, that's where they like to stop and have their nest. It's a lot of immigration of alligators coming into that area. Well, alligator hunting has become real popular. Yes, sir. Anybody, any more commissioners got any questions for Arnett? Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. We're glad you're here. Jerry Carter, <clears throat> law enforcement. Catch the outlaws. Catch the outlaws, sir. They're out there everywhere. Numbers are good. Morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Law enforcement makes its monthly report for the month of December on license and compliance checks. Uh, for the month of December, there were a total of 1,438 citations issued. The top five being, number one was uh, no license at 193. Number two is hunting from public road, road at 110. Supplemental feeding, number three, at 87. Number four is trespassing at 77. And number five is 70, is uh, no hunter orange. Uh, total count of that is 71. <clears throat> On our next page, uh, this is a photo of one of our K-9, uh, K-9 Ricky, who led our officers to a dead doe that hit near uh, the base of a tree in the Pascagoula WMA. Uh, the doe was seized by the officers, and the officers, uh, uh, hunters were cited for unlawful possession, killing does out of killing a doe out of season, and failure to check in at WMA and no WMA permit. Uh, it just shows you the fine work that our K nines uh, that we started up this uh, last year. They are doing a fantastic job in their uh, their field of enforcement is related to K nine. Uh, we received a call on these uh, individuals. Uh, some sp suspicious activity, and Officer Monter was the arresting officer. Colonel, how, ma how many K-9 do we have now? Uh, we've got uh, five, K four, four. We have four, four K-9s. Good. Yes, sir. And we're looking to get some more added on to, the, to our fleet. On our next slide is just give you all a kind of a little breakdown of how many headlighting cases uh, we've, we've uh, had for the month of December, which was 53. From October, uh, starting in October, we had a total of 90. Uh, it gives us a total of 90 uh, headlighting uh, citations that have been issued thus far. Those numbers hopefully will not rise, but we, we know for certain as a possibility it will uh, uh, due to some of the habitual outlaws that we have in our state or just people just still want to try to get, you know, try to get that last harvest uh, any way possible. But our guys are doing a great job being out there uh, in force. Matter of fact, uh, Officer Blaylock uh, was out last night. I was heard him on radio. He made a case last night in Atala County. So we're out there. We're doing. Our guys are doing a fantastic it, job. Isn't it, it the case that most of the people that we catch, the landowner calls us. Uh, calls it's, uh, uh, so percentage wise, out here. I continue to say it again. We thank the general public, which general is our public, landowner, agree. landowners that call That's us. How come we catch they, them. they help us out tremendously. We're grateful for them. Yes, sir. On our next page is our application process. We have uh, advertised for those that have probably been on that website. We are hiring for conservation officers. We're going to, uh, our applications are online now to be filled out all the way to February the 13th. And uh, once we get all the applications in on the deadline, then we'll continue forward on with the process, do the interviews, and hopefully we'll hire some good candidates and get ready to start our class uh, in May. What, what, what's your, how many you want to get? 
Uh, 20 right now. We're advertising for 20 positions for, cadet, for conservation officer cadets. Yes, sir. On our next page, to it. it's going to be our uh, shooting ranges report from December the 4th, 2023 to January the 14th, 2024. McIver had a total of 712 customers. Turcotte had a total of uh, 1,133 customers. And at McHenry, we had 1,362 customers. That is my, yes, sir. Yeah, I just, um, just, just for people's education, tell us what the difference between class three, class two, class one violations, like a spotlighting would be class one? Class one, yes, sir. So, I mean, tell, just so everybody here would just know what those are. Uh, class one violation for its cost and fine and penalties thereof, uh, you're looking at probably about uh, two to $5,000 fine on headlighting cases or, or for, well, class ones with the uh, possibility of having revocation of your license and privileges suspended. Class twos is probably range from 200 to $500 fine. Uh, with, what would be an example of class two? Uh, killing a doe out of, killing a, a doe out of season, uh, illegal harvest of a doe, or uh, anything of that nature. Supplemental feeding falls under the class What, what about trespassing? What? Uh, it's a class zero. Uh, it can be a class two depending on how we, how we write the citation. So you're looking at about 100 to what, maybe 100 to $500, or it could be a little less on that charge, depending on how the officer charged the individual. Class three is mainly 25 to 100, basically uh, no hunting license, no fishing license, depends on the- No the, license. The, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That take care of you, Mr. Yeah, no, I just, yes, just thought it's good to always review that. Just yes, sir. So people know. Yes, sir. Thanks. Anything, any more commissioners got any questions for Mr. Colonel? Chairman, I might add one thing to the Colonel's report, uh, just where everybody will know. Uh, we were trying to get, trying to graduate 20 cadets, and we probably will have to recruit, recruit in excess of, I'm going to say, 30, 30 to, to get out. 20. It's, mm -hmm. These men and women go through a very rigorous training program when they graduate both schools. They are probably the high, highest trained uh, law enforcement officers in the state of Mississippi. They go through almost 24 weeks of really training. They go through the 12 weeks of training that the Highway Patrol goes through, and they go through another 12 weeks of training in what we call Makota, our training school. So uh, they're, they're very well trained. They do an excellent job. And uh, Mike, go on there. We will be talking about trying to get some additional funds to get their salary up this go around as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's that seems to be the problem, well, Colonel, is that we've got to get the pay up. Yes, sir. Because we are, we're absolutely losing them to other law enforcement agencies. Yes, sir. That are that are able to provide uh, more salary than we are. So, I, I stand committed to whatever I can do to be of assistance in we trying to get the salaries up. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. We appreciate the onboarding cost. I think somebody gave me some numbers. Maybe Brian gave me some numbers one time. With the truck, it's about one hundred thirty-four thousand dollars to onboard a cadet. Um, a little bit less than that when the if, if you take the vehicles out of it. But I mean, that's us spending upwards of a hundred thousand dollars to train each cadet um, in the process. Yes, so sir. We need to we need to get a, a good return on our investment, and by doing that, I believe it would be uh, beneficial and imperative for us to figure ways to pay our more law enforcement our law enforcement officers more money because they, they do put their lives on the line every single day, and, um, and I stand committed to helping in any way, shape, or form where I can do that. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, our officers, again, uh, to add to that, uh, basically you have an officer, maybe one per county, maybe two per county. Uh, backup is maybe miles or hours away, especially with uh, deputy sheriffs. Uh, they may be on other calls, so that officer's out there by himself majority of the time when he's you know, facing the violator. So. And lot, they're lot, usually lot dealing with somebody that has a gun. Yes, sir. All the time. Yes, sir. Some form of a weapon. Appreciate what y'all did. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, other business. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cookwood. All
periodically we like to recognize <clears throat> people from around the state that add to our outdoors in a variety of ways. The, um, <clears throat> those who receive the recognition, uh, we enter into the official record of this meeting and you're there forever. So it's a pretty big deal to receive one of these salutes. We at the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fishes, and Parks work hard to conserve and enhance Mississippi's natural resources and to provide continuing outdoor recreation opportunities for all Mississippians. And we appreciate those who help us accomplish our mission. So today we're gonna to honor three people and uh, I'll call y'all up one at a time. And the first will be Dr. Todd Davis, John Philip Land, and Pimble Davis. So Todd, if you'll come forward, please. Todd lives here in Cleveland and uh, he's over the outdoor program at Delta State. And uh, by the way, that is the first outdoor program of this kind in the state. He's from Idaho, he's a graduate of the University of Idaho, received bachelor's and master's degrees there, received his doctorate of education degree from Delta State. <clears throat> in addition to Delta State, Todd has a long history of serving in the educational system in Idaho as well. And back in the 90s, Todd was a helicopter rescue swimmer and aviation survival technician for the U.S. Coast Guard. <clears throat> Todd and his staff take students on expeditions and canoeing, sea kayaking, rock climbing, whitewater rafting, camping, mountain biking, and he oversees the many workshops and clinics that are often, uh, that often take place at Delta State pertaining to outdoor activities. And I'd venture to say if it wasn't for Todd and his program, many young people would never see uh, the outdoors are experiencing like we'd like to, to, uh, to have them do that. So Todd does a lot for the state and for the community. So Todd, here you are. Here's our first recognition right there. We took a taking picture. Is that okay with the podium in the way? Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, after this, y'all, the recipients, let's gather over here, we'll take a group picture. Next up is John Philip Land. <clears throat> JP goes by, he lives here in Cleveland and he's a graduate of Mississippi State University and he's a banker at Bank Plus here. JP has been involved in Duck, Ducks Unlimited practically since the day he was born. <laughs> he began attending DU banquets as a child at the North Sunflower chapter and has been an active DU member most of his life. JP currently serves as the state chairman of Mississippi Ducks Unlimited. He previously served as Bolivar County Chairman, Delta District Chairman, and State Treasurer. JP was the 2019 Ducks Unlimited Volunteer of the Year and 2020 Ducks Unlimited District Chairman of the Year. So JP, we, we honor you, we're thankful for you. Davis. Pimble is a farmer who lives in Marigot and he was introduced to hunting at a very early age. His late grandfather was a founder of Marigot Hunting Club, which is one of the oldest hunting clubs in the state located on the Mississippi River. Pimble grew up hunting in that club and along the way he developed an interest in hunting in Africa. For several decades, Pimble has made dozens of trips hunting in Africa and because of him, many other Delta hunters have been introduced to African hunting. Pimble has written articles on African hunting, consulted with authors who have written books on African hunting, and Pimble has been interviewed many times by hunting, the hunting media when it comes to African hunting rifles and hunting in general. Pimble is a significant promoter of not just African hunting, but hunting in general. Pimble Davis. Pimble has 30 minutes. No, no. Come in. Thank you, Scott. When I walked in the door, I didn't recognize this guy, but I've known him for 67 years. I got to figuring a while ago. It's a long time. It's a long time. Long time. I didn't know that. A good friend of Ed Coleman, Reeve Neblett, and a lot of other people in here. And if I just take a few minutes. Yes, sir. You okay, recognize. That's fine. All right. <clears throat> I appreciate the award very much, and I really appreciate what y'all have done for Mississippi and the wildlife in Mississippi. And the mo most thing, thing I want to say th about is this. There's a lot of women in this state, in this country, and in this world that love to hunt. 
Sometimes we overlook them. But last year, y'all gave an honor to a lady that really deserves it. Whoever did that was very, did a good job of taking the right person. Her name is Stephanie McGar. <laughs> and she has done a great job of advocation of women hunting wherever. And it didn't make any difference wherever. She grew up in the hills and first started frog hunting, I think. I don't know. But uh, I didn't know her then. But I wouldn't put it past her at all. And the, the people that really are behind, like y'all up here, should recognize that these women are a vital part of our hunting society. And without them, we're in trouble. Now, the next person I'd like to represent, rep, recognize is a person that doesn't hunt at all doesn't hunt at all, could care less. But she is so involved in hunting, it's, it'll scare you. She works with two different safari companies over in Africa, and they are very much advocates of conservation. These two different families got a, uh, many years ago, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, got a hold of a place, and they named it the Sabe Conservancy. It's been voted as one of the top five places in the world to hunt. They've taken the place from zero game, zero, to an unbelievable amount of all the species that are in Africa that are in that location. It's in southeast Zimbabwe. The uh, people that just happened to do that, but let me, this is my wife over here, and she works for these people. She doesn't hunt, but she works for these people. And she's worked for them for about 15, 17 years, something like that. And I really believe they, they think a whole lot more than her that, that do me, because when I go, I pay. When she goes, they roll out the damn red carpet, excuse me. <laughs> but anyway, a long story short, Bill, these two of these people are here today, and they're all right there, Guy and Hannah Whittle. And they are the one, their, their families are the ones that put together Sabe Conservancy, which is the, one of the largest wildlife conservancies in Africa. And I'm pleased to have them here. They, they, she got here from Zimbabwe last night and drove from Memphis down here and lost her bag somewhere along the way, but Hannah made it. But I've known Guy and Hannah for a long, long time. Peggy, I've known them longer than Peggy, but they're real good people, and they are conservation big time because without them there, there'd be no game in Africa. Only 15% of the animals in Africa live in national parks and, and restricted hunting areas. The rest of them is on their own. Without these people taking, taking advance in, in, in poaching, or stopping poaching and conservation and telling people, look, we do this so we can have this game for people to hunt, just like what y'all do, try to do to help the state of Mississippi, wherever it is. And it's all, in all, it's all the same. But if we don't all stick together, believe you me, there's people out there that would like to stop this tomorrow. And they've got enough people now and people in Congress that would stop it if it's not for people like like all of us. Thank you very much, Bill. Mr. Pimble, who, are the, who are the ladies? Can they Are they here, everybody? Right there. Yeah. Right there. And yeah. then you. And guy, my wife. All right. No, so, hey, Pimble, no. That lady is some kind of kin to Peter Rabbit. My God. Well, she's kin to two people here, Reeves and Peter Rabbit. And I don't know. <laughs> Both of them claim her, I guarantee you. Peter Rabbit was a very fine guy. He was an advocate of hunting just like everybody else, and, and we, all did, we all knew him. We really miss him. So anyway, thank you all very much. I didn't take too long. Sorry. Thank you, Pimble. I did so y'all so, so know, uh, <clears throat> I got invited to Marigold Hunting Club when I was 18 years old. I'd never seen a deer in the woods I'm within Abbott, Tallahatchie County. And I came over and spent the night in Mr. Mr. Pimble's cabin and went hunting the next day with a guy named Milton Smith who was a supervisor in Bolivar County. And I killed my first deer. I think Pimble was about eight or nine, ten years old. What year was that, Mr. Bill? 1956. 1956. I'll be 86 uh, in, a in, in about a month. But anyhow, that's, uh, we go back a long ways. So it's, it's, it's a pleasure. I'm really glad to see you. Okay, I'm gonna recognize uh, Commissioner Bentz has a motion. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, well, the, commo the, the motion that I'm gonna uh, offer today, I know it's gonna be a controversial one, but I, I, I believe it's the right thing to do. Um, we've had some challenges here over the last couple of, uh, of months regarding the, uh, the foundational wildlife fisheries and parks. Uh, and being that we 
that we uh, request, I think on our website, Jason, is that correct? Mm -hmm. We request, uh, we have a box, a checkbox donation for, for, uh, for foundation. I think it's important that, uh, that we either do one of two things. We suspend our relationship with them as of right now till we can get the plant in order, or we just sever our relationship entirely um, because there are what I think are some challenges there, and um, that is my motion to either suspend or sever the relationship that we have with the Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks Foundation. All right, you heard the motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion fails for lack of second. Appreciate it. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Posey, what about the next meeting? Uh, we're going to try something different for the next meeting um, with y'all's approval. I thought we'd try to go out to the, our Black Prairie WMA, which is out from Starkville. They got a nice meeting room there, and we've uh, got Russ to contact some of the folks at uh, Mississippi State, they're in the process of reworking their, their deer pen operation out there, and they can bring you guys up to date on some of the research they're doing up there and some of the new facilities they'll have to do that research in. So it would be February the 22nd, which is Thursday. Me would be back in Black Prairie WMA, and we will try to get some rooms. If anybody needs one, please let us know there in the Starkville area and go out there that morning. We'll have that education session that started at 10, and our business session will start at 11. Good. Everybody got that on the calendar? Okay, is it any more business? I see none, Mr. Chairman. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion. motion to adjourn is always in order. Second. We adjourn. Thank you all for being here.